<laughs> Just the emotional weight that they bring into this. It's so on point. Hey everyone, it's Garrison here and welcome back to the Patreon or the channel where we're currently watching from. And today I am really, really excited because I'll be doing my first listen slash full on album review to L's Up's first mini album titled 7 Plus Up or 7 Up More So. And let's be real here, based on that highlight medley for those who saw it with me, I was thinking, man, this has to be album of the year material seriously like from the first track die for you familiar elements but fun retro influences in the mix it seems like all the way to cloud nine the final track that seems like it's gonna be a special song by this special group like seriously speaking of special l's up is sure special it was all worth the while the wait in my humblest opinion to go through queendom puzzle the turn of events that Mnet was uh, doing, of course, all the way to this group and the formation and combination of L's Up. Like, the more I think about this, think about it, right? Yunhee and K within the same group, right? It's that sort of mother-daughter connection. And then we have the likes of Biso and the caliber of Urim. Like, come on, everyone. So... I'm really anticipating for some good B-sides off of this mini album, considering familiar names as well. So hey, without further ado, let's just dive into this album review now. Alright, so this first song is titled Die For You. I'm seeing familiar names right off the rip. We got JJ on the lyrics, who has worked on a couple of my favorite OSTs out there and tracks OSTs in terms of Home by Big Naughty, XC of Wuju Sonia. And one of my favorite DJs and artists out there, Raiden, of course, who has had like incredible collaborations. Let's be real here for those who are familiar of Raiden. Also, JJ has taken part on Let's Scrum, Go, Go, coming off of Are You Next, mess of a show, but still amazing uh, song, of course. And then in terms of the composing side, we've got Ryan Jun. For those who are familiar, I don't like to talk much about him due to various reasons, obviously, but his works either hit or miss, in my humblest opinion, when his hits, you know, hits, they do be hitting. We got Jay Hong, Monster Number 9, a little bit familiar with Monster Number 9 these days, has worked recently with Secret Number in their song, Starlight, as well as worked with Yukika in the past before. Uh, we have Vor Vora Dory still familiarizing or got to familiarize with Vor Vora Dory. And then we have, last but not least, Luis Uden. Wow, Luis Uden is a new name for me, and that's solely due to 5050's Cupid. That's right. She has taken part on that song. So it feels like everything's going to probably add up here in terms of hearing out the influences by these individuals taking part on this song. So I'm gonna bring it up here right away and let's go. Ooh, kicking off with Yunhee, bit of an intro. A little bit of familiar tropes, quite admittedly with the intro, but. First one with Nana, I like it here. <laughs> Love that bass guitar work a lot. The Urim, wow. Nice shakers in the back, added ear candy there. Ooh, we so here though. Chorus. Whoa. 
what a moment by Yin here, but also what we're hearing on both sides of our ears. Like fun strumming on our left side. In the forefront, that bass guitar. Okay. Wow, this song is quite catchy right away, y'all. It's catchy. Whoa, what a trip with Ian here in verse two. Love the ticking of the hi-hats here. <laughs> oh, this song is so sweet and lovely due to the vocal work and the vocal layering here. Oh, speaking of vocal layering. Yeah. I love the rhythm guitar moments to the electronic drum kit work in this. That's a hard-hitting electronic drum there. Hard for you. Very lighthearted with the delivery. And angelic with it. <laughs> Yuki. Bridge. Taking the clock sampling, kind of. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh, that follow-up with K was outstanding. A little bit more, just a little bit more. Oh yeah. Ooh. Is that an electric guitar? Oh. Yo, die for you. Not gonna lie. Coming through better than expected. Like all the way from the highlight medley to the full track in itself. Uh, unfortunately, I gotta say this is one of the, the hitting tracks that Ryan Jun has come through with, but you cannot take that away from the others, the likes of Jay Hong, likes of Vor Voradori, and of course you can sense Luis Uden's influence on this, knowing that she's taken part on Cupid by 5050, which by the way, isn't necessarily a song that takes the full city pop route. Like seriously though, like if you want full city pop, there are other tracks out there, especially by the likes of Yukika, which I've mentioned here at the start of my coverage for Die For You. And JJ's lyrics, very fitting for this song, I've got to admit. So you got to give a lot to JJ as being the sole lyricist on this song. I can't emphasize this enough. Always want to give credit where credit is due, especially on really, really good music. This being very angelic, lovely. And takes mostly the retro route, similarly to Cupid, with a little bit of city pop sheen to it. You know, there's just, just a bit of sheen on the surface level to the song of city pop and everything else. Ooh, very groovy with it and retro-y per se. And that's simply due to the likes of the electronic drum kit work. But the amount of ear candy that we're getting is insane if you think about it how everything gets panned to our left side of our ears with the guitar work and the strumming that's going on the percussion work sometimes on the left side and the right side of our ears like this is a full-blown experience when you have headphones or nice earbuds on for this song i've got to admit speakers wouldn't do as justice for this particular song and i know we're only on the first track but so far <laughs> This, surprisingly, is so far my favorite B-side coming off of this mini-album. But let me bring it up here to process more of the instrumentation, especially nearing the end of the song here with the electric guitar, I believe, and other moments where... 
I sensed quite a bit of ear candy that was panning the left side and the right side of our ears. Ooh, ooh. Sometimes. Sometimes. Like, it, it just, there's that effect that you get in this song where it's like, when a member goes, like, with the chorus or uh, sometimes, you just want to, like, naturally follow it up with an ad lib to it. You feel me? I can't be the only one. Oh, well, you know, you're sensing the familiar tropes here, right? Man, that goes to show you there's a lot of thought in terms of the emphasis on certain lines, whether it's the start of these lines, the ends of these lines, or the middle of the pack of these lines. The kind of emphasis that's put and layering that's put during these lines that are carried out by the members is very well thought out. Oh yeah, that that bass guitar. I love it. You know, it's simple, but it's effective. Because I like how it's carried in in some moments. It's like introduced at the beginning, like near the beginning or with verse one. And then it, it it's gets taken away for a bit and then it's reintroduced later on. You feel me? Die for you. Oh, I love hearing this side of Yin so much. A little bit more, just a little bit more. A little bit more. The fun breakdown of the electronic drum kit usage that's utilized in many retro genres, whether that be synth wave, new uh, disco, you name it. You feel me? And if I can say, if there's a member that's truly rocking the song, it's K without a doubt. I did, you know, there's that, that reference to Lovelies where it's like, they can do th this kind of majestic style kind of music. Like, not necessarily in this kind of style. More so in a Lovelies way. Just a little bit more. Very unexpected moment in verse 2 with Yen, but I've got to admit, this really sticks for me. Like, I love her moment here. Love the ad lib work too. Claps, bit of strumming or plucks going there. Yuki has more so transitioning moments, unfortunately. Like, I felt like they could have totally followed up with Ian and Yuki during verse 2, in my humblest opinion. But I do like her brief uh, moments, right? Brief but effective. Just really wish we got a little bit more from her. I love how prominent, like, that shaker or the ticking of the hi-hat work is on the right side of our ears in this moment. So good. Hearing this side to Nana too is so refreshing. There's that strumming. You hear that 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 rhythm guitar? Notice it on the left side. Hone in here. So cool. Die for you. Heart for you. <laughs> Man, this is so title track worthy. I'm gonna be real with y'all. If like they, they took this route, I would have been completely fine as with this title this track as well, I should say. Bridge. See what I'm saying with the vocal layering? It's it's chiming in here from Kay herself. And these twists and turns, these subtle twists and turns that Kay is really good at doing with her vocal work. You know it's coming. 
breakthrough moment and very fitting with Weezo in the forefront. Everyone, oh my goodness, Weezo too on this song is amazing. Cry for you. Roll down. Definitely strumming of the the electric guitar in the works at first. Like this first part, it seems like almost like a brass saxophone type of instrument, but it is an electronic guitar. Ah, oh, that's gnarly. Do do. Oh, how it climbs here with the electric guitar. What a start to this mini album, everyone, and I'm sure the quality is going to continue like this into the other tracks, so let's just get into the next B-side now. So this next B-side is titled Undercover, aka one of my most anticipated songs coming off of this album, and I'm seeing familiar names from a team called In-House. From what I know, this is a brand new production uh, team. And this team is consisting of quite familiar uh, names, believe it or not, of Minor Milo that I'm seeing here who has worked on Tantara, that old school hip hop release by Icon, Song Yu, who has recently taken part on I Do by XO's D.O. Such a lovely song. Highly recommend you guys check out that song or even my review to that specific song. We have Jessica. Pierpoint taking part on the composing side to this song. We love to see her on this. Jessica, we've, uh, you know, interviewed her on the channel before or had a nice uh, talk. But also, for those who know, she has recently worked on Starlight by Secret Number, has participated on Login by 5050, and even Sneakers by itsy so i i'm pretty sure we can expect a lot more from the likes of jessica likes of in-house in general coming our way from our favorites in the future but i'm gonna bring up undercover here right away and let's go oh lot going on here everyone That kick snare work, that hi-hat work, I love it. Ooh. A little bit of ear candy here and there going on. Ooh, the snap in here with Yunhee during the pre-chorus, I love it. Snare drum build up with K here, okay? Oh! What? Oh! That was unexpected, but what a drop to the song. And a fun moment there. Ooh, the distortion here. I love it. It's a little bit sinister, but not too dark with it. Because the na 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 adds that nice added contrast to the distortion. Yoni. In the end? I love these sort of like digital plucks going on almost. Bit of turn disc work it seems like in the K. Oh, very fitting moment for K. Yes. And I love the passion in this song in terms of the vocal direction. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, that is that is very gritty and dirty with it. I like it. I lowkey like it. Undercover. Na, 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 na. Yeah, just the contrast in this. I love it. Whoa! What's going on here? This 
spiraling. Is that snare drum work? <laughs> I love how we get the bit of na 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 from majority of the members, pretty much. But that heavy distortion. Ooh, Huiso! What a moment here! Wow, and really ending it off on a high note, everyone. Undercover is <laughs> quite admittedly absolutely mind-blowing in how it goes in terms of the twist and turns right into the thick of things with the chorus and then all the way to the outro and i've got to admit like the catchy moments like that na 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 right during the refrains in this song are uh, really catchy those were the more so uh catchy uh moments but all in all quite memorable due to its impact during the chorus and how it has a little bit of ear candy that sort of bongo padding of the bongo congo work it's very subtle at the beginning i'm not sure if you guys noticed that right away i really adored how it kicked off and then we got a little bit of ear candy that i'm gonna have to point out i love the ad lib work in this specific uh, song it has a fatty meaty bass to it as uh well at uh times so you know really rambunctious fun song i've got to admit that <laughs> and uh, yeah i'm gonna bring it back up here right away to process more what's going on and point out my favorite parts and maybe those bits that i was talking about that you may have missed out on so let's just do that again love the digital elements added on this To, 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 I love that 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 snare drum work and then the ticking of the hi hats in the back and see what I'm saying with the ad lib work here. <laughs> Especially here, the ad lib work is something to adore. Seems like there's a wood ball out. Yeah. But overall, how it progresses into the pre-chorus, beautiful setup and transition into the pre-chorus. <laughs> Boomy bass. I think if we're talking about some of the members that shine in this song, definitely Yunhi, definitely Huiso. <laughs> Man, this sure gets quite addictive upon second listen, I'm sure, with more listens as well. Just with this crazy draw. The hey, hey, hey makes it more playful. <laughs> oh, love it. This is the moment that I've been waiting for by Yun He in L's Up. Like, we s saw and heard glimpses of her having these sort of breakdown, fun moments uh, during her performances during Queendom Puzzle and all. And thank you for providing her a moment in verse 2. Like, her moment here is very fitting. Like, just her approach and her tone to this, oh, so good. Then you got yeah and yeah. Quick follow up in the urum. A little bit of uh, turn disc work going on there, transitioning into K. Oh, 
Wow, that's a quick delivery of Borderline. I just noticed that. These very, like, chimey, you know, percussion-like mm, sounds going on coming from our left side, our right side, our ears in the back there ever so subtly is really cool, I've got to admit. There's a lot more detail to this drop than it seems on the surface level. <laughs> wow, as this song progresses and progresses, it gets even more earwormy with it, which I love. Crazy spiraling moment with Quiso and Yurum, I've got to admit. How they combo off each other there is really nice. Just the spiraling here. Very boomy. Maybe some woodblock work in the Yunhee there. Ooh. Definitely usage of different drums in this. But like... It's crazy how like the swing sort of changes from the beginning at the and the nearing of the end here because notice at the beginning here. You hear that you hear that nice swing with the bongo congo work at the start there, a subtle bongo congo work. You know, very playful with it, eases us in. But then it ends on more so of a high note with the swing in and all. And just the overall movement to it. Yeah. This was a really good, really good song, y'all. See what I'm saying? I, I'm pretty sure we can expect more from In House, a song that I could definitely foresee myself listening to a lot due to the earwormy factor in this song it's not too repetitive with it in terms of the chorus i've got to admit and that's due to the post chorus slash refrain with the na 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 right amount of syllables in the works emphasizes the word under a uh, cover and thank you for having yunhee in verse two the only thing just like the title track though i've got to admit in the future everyone like the creatives behind um l's up Needs to just let Yin and quite admittedly Yin and Yuki to come through with their own lines because we know they can write their own lyrics, right? The likes of Purple Kisses, Yuki especially. So in the future, I definitely hope that changes in future tracks because I don't see any of their credits uh, on uh, these uh, songs. So knowing that they haven't wrote the, their uh, lines just seems like there's a lot more potential of doing that in the future you feel me but aside from that really loved undercover here very unexpected with the drop and all but let's just get into the next track now so this next b-side is titled hideaway my most anticipated b-side solely due to the highlight medley familiar names we have here kz kz has worked with the likes of mcnd and their song ice age i am you by stray kids still one of my favorite songs by stray kids still to this day as well as as one of course with bo in conjunction and all we have dint as well on the lyrics but on the composing side we not only have kz kim taehyung someone who i'm still familiarizing with has worked with the likes of dripping in the past before as well as 17's oh my uh pinwheel as well as other amazing 17 uh, tracks we got bayside pablo as well but aside from that I'm gonna bring up Hideaway here and Lego. Love the strumming of the acoustic guitar. The whistling here. That's probably gonna be looped a lot within this. Oh! Lisa, I love her lower register here. Ooh. 
And we're off to a great start to this song. Oh, this is what we got in the highlight medley. The pre-chorus. Still building up with K though. Epic drums, some horns, snare drum work. This one has quite an interesting drop to it as well. Ooh, a lot of vocal attack going on. Pursuit. In the end, of course. Yo, this is fire. Ooh, Nana. See what I'm saying with the lower register usage in this? Man. Just from the, the usage of their lower registers to the likes of Yunhee during the pre chorus. I love it. Because once we hit the court, the pre-chorus, it elevates and elevates. A lot of intensity that's built up. <laughs> this really would work as a song during the finale of Kingdom Puzzle, I've got to admit. With that synthesizer work. Oh, this bridge though. Then snapping. The strumming acoustic guitar. Oh my. Ooh, this outro. Love how they bring it back together here. All the members. For the final climax and be all. Yo, Hideaway, the intensity in the song, the passion is to die for most importantly. Like how the intensity that we get building up and climaxing into the drop of the chorus from the pre-chorus that sets it up so cleanly. I love it. Like Hideaway, it goes insane. Like very angelic vocals, ethereal like during the pre-chorus. And then boom, once we hit the chorus as a crazy drop. Quite differently comparably to Undercover, but still has that breakdown that happened in Undercover. So it makes sense to follow up with Hideaway right after Undercover, I've got to admit. But taking a whole different, completely different kind of uh, approach, right? Almost feels like a follow up to Bad Blood off of Queendom Puzzle, of course. But let me bring up hideaway here again and break it down a little bit more everyone so let me bring it back up here from the beginning i love the acoustic guitar a lot provides a nice light start to the song the whistling definitely does not continue that way as we progress and progress in this song but see what I'm saying? The lower register usage, you know, whether that be the likes of Huiso, whether it be the likes of Nana, so cool. It adds this added, like, dark husk to the song that I love. Still got the strumming of the guitar here. And then... Pre chorus. Very ethereal, like with Yurum, that I love a lot here. 
So the pre-chorus, one of my favorite moments in this song. Epic drums. Very hard hitting here with K. Build up the snare drum work. Electronic drum kit work there. And just the intensity of the wubbing and dubbing and the synthesizer work is so cool. Like, sure, these lines are not made from Yuki herself and, of course, Yin after Yuki here, but you gotta give her delivery and flow. Like, her delivery here. I love it. Keeps the energy going in the song and actually takes it to a whole nother level. And what's smart, after the rap, they follow up with Nana and I like how it still continues with verse 2 before they bring us to the thick of things in the main parts in the song so it was really clever of them to come through with this these kind of lines for nana so i've got to say the likes of nana yuram and yuki really shine in this song and even yin right The dragon of one, two. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then we follow up here. Let me get into that moment that I love. Um. Right here. Yeah, here we go. This is why I'm saying why Yeni shines in this. Like the bridge. So beautiful with it. It's sort of like one of those moments that there's that light at the end of the this dark tunnel kind of moment, you feel me? The comboing with Yuki and Yi in there, like, come on. Oh, the intensity, I love it. And it brings back the whistling or more so that woodwind instrument. Ooh. Sort of like a glimpse and or a leap of faith kind of courageous moment that I'm feeling in this song, which is really cool. But I can't emphasize this enough, how the members are utilizing their lower register for this particular uh, song and how there's a slight like dark husk to this song is so uh cool and it's very contrasting comparably to undercover so great song choice here during the nearing ends of this album but let's just get into the final b-side and wrap things up now so last but not least we have cloud nine the song that i had a really good gut feeling for in terms of being that special song coming from l's up but i'm seeing huge names here starting off in terms of the lyrics department we got Jessica O oh, or OU on who has taken part on a couple of my favorite songs in the past before and in my humblest opinion is on the come up has recently worked with I've for I want has worked on love me right by EXO that's right and even paper moon by K a lovely b-side by K herself everyone now on the composing side sure we got Ryan Jun one name that stood out to me is Sean Fisher because he has worked on the likes of Timeless by Taehyun. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to sense his influence on this particular song. Lucas Marston, Boran as well. Okay, Boran has worked with Jessica Pierpoint in the past before for Can't Stop Dreamin' from Purple Kiss. Has recently worked on Seven by Purple Kiss as well. Goes to show you what she has in store for us has worked on incredible songs both for girl groups and boy groups i've got to admit 
And then last but not least, we have Mayu Akisaka, one of my favorite individuals out there who has taken part on the likes of Love Bomb by Fromis9, if I recall correctly. Other huge uh, B-sides as well, coming from the likes of G-Friend in the past before, Billy as well, goes to show you the musicality coming from Mayuaki Saka. But I'm going to bring up Cloud9 here. Let's go. Ooh. I love the strumming of the guitar here. A little bit of finger style coming to play. Just hearing the threads being moved, I love it. Ooh, Nana with verse one. Where is this headed though? I'm loving what I'm hearing so far. Oh, yeah, in here. I'm loving her moment here. You make my days. Oh, yes. Just that release by K in the chorus. And that finger style on the guitar, I love it. So memorable during this first listen. Aww. A lot of sweet moment here during verse two. Ooh, Yuki. Oh, every time when K comes through, very fitting. Just a breakthrough moment that we get in the song is so beautiful. Bit of horns in the back. Bum, bum. Or more so bass. Oh, this bridge though. A woodwind instrument, a flute. Oh, so this is what they hit us in the highlight medley with. I'm Cloud Nine, Cloud Nine, Cloud Nine, Cloud Nine. <laughs> oh, they just sent me here. I mean, I mean, when you're by my side, you guys know I am a sucker for these type of songs that just have an incredible emotional release and a fantastic chorus that has a lot of memorability to it. You feel me? You know, aside from like Yuki, right? Not getting that much uh, lines in this one. I think this mostly has positives to it. That's the only drawback i've got to say aside from that i think cloud nine is the right song to wrap it up as the last track for this first mini album debut mini album as a whole everyone and this is just that special song from l's up that you could always rely on and go back upon this is the type of like consoling song that you'd always go to that sort of go to consoling song you feel me and like cloud nine i love how it really slowly builds up to that 
final climax of a moment that we get later on in the song. So I actually want to bring it back up here right away because I think from the bridge to the final chorus is it's absolutely incredible everyone so i'm gonna bring it up here right away to break things down more point out my favorite parts i ah, just love hearing those threads move boom boom love that bass work I really loved the likes of Nana, Piso, and K specifically in this song, I've got to admit. It's crazy because like throughout this entire first listen to this album, I love hearing these brand new sides that you don't tend to get from their own respective groups, you know what I'm saying? Like there's parts where it's like, oh. I haven't heard something like this before by the likes of Yurum, by, you know, the, the likes of Huiso, especially the likes of uh, Nana, you know what I'm saying? So that's very refreshing to hear. Love the glistening of the chimes here in the back here to, you know, open it up and provide a nice moment for Yin, right? And right away, let me hear this out. Boom. Boom. Some, I really want to go with those, those, those over the top kind of horns that are being glazed by you know what i'm saying i'm leaning more towards that end but notice how we still get more of that flute woodwind work in the mix Doo -doo. like right there i love it like someone as someone who's played the flute in the past before back in my high school days i really appreciate that woodwind work cloud nine cloud nine cloud nine I mean, when you're by my side. Did I not tell you Jessica O oh is so on the come up in terms of lyrics? Like, she is an incredible lyricist that's on the come up. Like, if you enjoyed the likes of I Want, you know, Love Me, Right, Right. All these tracks, and including Cloud... Oh, Nine? Like, come on. Gotta give credit where credit's due. <laughs> Such a sweet moment with Genhi. Definitely, I think verse 2 has to be one of my favorite parts in the song, aside from the chorus, obviously. So definitely the chorus is this part with Nana. I love it. And the follow-up with Yuki, am I right? Oh. oh yeah so there's that horn work bass usage like in other parts yeah just from that like finger style guitar to the plucks being done in this song i love it bridge Totally forgot about the bridge so chorus verse 2 bridge and final chorus are my favorite parts in this song without a doubt everyone <laughs> I like singular synth I love it Oh my goodness. Probably one of the best climaxes that Elzup has done so far. <laughs> a 
And what was this concern during Queendom Puzzle to have like K and Huiso on the same team? Like, come on, there. <laughs> Nothing's conflicting about this. That's my bias, y'all. I mean, I mean, when you're by my side. Okay, so definitely no horn work in this song, but more so different kind of basses utilized in this song. That's cool, y'all. Because it wrapped up with that bass, and I was like, oh yeah, this sounds familiar then versus like earlier on and all so just to wrap it up here let me bring up the track listing yes l's up and their first mini album seven up everyone this was a really strong debut mini album it's almost album of the year material it's it doesn't hit it quite there i think that's just due to slight uh distribution and how I would want certain things to play out another way, uh, quite possibly with arrangement uh, wise and slightly due to title track wise. But I think Cheeky is still there for the title track. But if you were to tell me that L's Up can switch up the concept and go with Die For You, Die For You is so title track worthy. I've got to admit, like Die For You, it has a little bit of that city pop sheen, not too much full retro influences and the overall movement movement to that song is absolutely stunning everyone so die for you i think that's my favorite uh b-side and then ooh, i think considering that i do like cloud nine a lot i think cloud nine is tied with the likes of hideaway or undercover because i would put undercover and hideaway together so to be fair, I think I'd put Die For You, then Cloud9, and then I would have to go with Hideaway and Undercover tied with each other, right? They still have that that breakdown in the chorus uh, differently from each other, from one another, I should uh, say. And I still was surprised with how things went for Undercover. Verse 2, Yunhee, love to hear it. Hideaway with yuki having her moment even though it's not her own uh lines made in that particular song love to hear it i think imagine if we had the best of both worlds of undercover and hideaway where we got that verse two with yunhi and yuki would be incredible like somehow fit in yunhi yuki and yian in a verse two or something like that or follow it up after like a refrain you know what i'm saying that would have been really really cool so i think there's some things wanted that's taken away the sort of album of the year material for me for this particular that comes to lines that comes to ian and yuki writing their own rap lines and lyrics in future l's up songs so hopefully they are provided that creative freedom because yian can more than do that yuki she has done it across tracks like cloud nine she has done it across tracks like Cheeky. If you for fellow Floris know, you know, right? So all in all, I give this a strong 9 out of 10 in terms of rating for this particular album. But let me know your thoughts. Can you relate with some of my sentiments or statements today or my biased uh, thoughts during towards certain uh, tracks? But as always, be sure to like and subscribe as it goes a long way and helps out the channel so so much just want to smart connecting with y'all in the comment section down below can't wait to receive my physical albums for l's ups latest album here seven up as soon as possible but take care as always this has been garrison and peace